country. The numbers are going up very fast. Um, we've said already, if you want to join in, there's a chat box bottom right hand side of the screen uh, where Uh, rather than just all panelists. So welcome to the Drake Music first step up webinar. It's one of a series of three. And this evening I'm here, my name's Douglas Noble. I'm here with John Kelly. And we are gonna unpack some of the ideas around inclusion. This is part of our Drake Music Think 22 program, which is an Amy program. That's capital A, capital M, capital I, capital E, which is a youth music alliance, a youth music led alliance for musically inclusive England. There's us and a number of other organizations as part of that alliance. And of course, everybody working in the area of musical inclusion is on that journey, the inclusion journey. And we felt it was really important to ask a question about what we mean by inclusion. And tonight, this webinar is part of the unpacking and exploring of that alongside the publication of a new paper on that by Drake Music. So welcome everybody. It's really great to have you here. And I'm going to hand over to... Slide. Yeah. Um, Martin, H. Martin, could you just take us on to the next slide? I'll hand on to John Kelly. Okay, so uh, it's really, really exciting to be here. I think we've got, but um, just so you know how it all works, you've got your panel down the right hand side, and uh, we want to obviously get people as involved as possible. We're expecting about 100 people in tonight, so it's kind of amazing, really. Um, but you can use the chat panel. Uh, along the bottom right hand side there just make sure that that little blue box there is uh, you've got it to all panelists and attendees and then everyone will be able to um, see your chat and comment um, you've also got an opportunity to raise your hand there's a little icon where you can raise your hand virtual raise um, and then we'll be able to turn your microphone on if you want to say something um, and we can all hear. So it's not just my voice and Douglas's voice. So there's loads of ways of interacting throughout the evening. Um, so thank you, Douglas, for the introduction. Um, we're gonna get onto the next slide. Thank you. So um, tonight I'm unpacking the big ideas around inclusion. And to be honest, there are some big ideas, but actually inclusion is um, at its heart a very simple notion of uh, feeling a sense of belonging, being part of something. Um, and I'm by no means the expert um, on inclusion. There's plenty of expertise on the webinar here tonight. I can see by people who've dropped in already that there's lots of expertise and there's lots of experience around inclusion so it would be really really lovely to hear uh, your thoughts and comments about inclusion um, I certainly don't have all the answers um, but for me some of these words that are on the screen now about it being dynamic and creative bold and exciting and radical are things I've kind of lived through um, I'm going to start by giving you a little bit about my journey into inclusion, in the sense that I was a kid from the 70s in terms of, um, I experienced going to a special school um, and um, at that time, the idea of special education needs had just about come on board. So it was a, a brand new, thought but we were certainly not kind of mixed very much with our non-disabled peers um, so I did that kind of informally outside of education and um, so my experience was one about kind of being excluded and being segregated um, 
but wanting to be with my disabled and non-disabled friends. Um, so my kind of journey started kind of there, really. Um, it's interesting to look at inclusion from a context of sort of chronology in terms of disability um, and the kind of whole idea that, you know, uh, the first part of the century, the 19th century, say people institutionalised and segregated and that kind of move along to being done to and then trying to get us to fit in to society. Um, then those kind of ideas about kind of integration, us fitting in to a non-disabled person's world. Um, and tonight's kind of journey really is kind of suggesting that inclusion is very, very different from ideas of integration. Um, and our thoughts and ideas are going to be sort of unpacked in sort of four principles, which aren't revolutionary. They're not like rocket science. And I'm sure that, um, as I say, in this, in this chat room, there's many experts who've got lots of experience of it. Can we just go on to the next slide, um, Martin, please? So the aims of tonight's kind of webinar really is, is really for um, us to explore the key thoughts around inclusion and to begin to develop a shared understanding of what inclusion means in our practice um, and to encourage sort of a dialogue that brings about further change in practice. I guess that's saying that there's a sense that we could go further. There's a sense that inclusion um, still has quite a few opportunities and a few challenges that need to be addressed. Um, we still meet disabled people who are excluded in education and are excluded outside of education in informal settings. And so the ideas around inclusion still need to be furthered, still need to be practiced. And we kind of feel that inclusion is the kind of right start. You know, fitting in inclusion, being about us equally being together um, is the key. So if you go to the next slide, um, just by way of context, how did this conversation start? Well, um, Drake Music, who hopefully most of you will know, but Drake Music works in the field of music education and um, accessible music technology um, as innovators and educators and creators. And um, over the sort of past five or six years, we've um, had an opportunity through a program called Think 20 and then Think 22 to develop our practice in terms of exploring this kind of concept around inclusion. And the journey has kind of helped us to clarify what it means to our practice. And the document that we're kind of launching tonight, hopefully some of you will have already seen it. Um, uh, there is a link to it and we'll share that with you in a, a few minutes. But I think you, during the invite there was a link to it, but you can all get it either through the webinar or afterwards on the website and we'll give you all the links to it. But that, that document is really sort of saying where we're at really and also our next steps, what's next for us in terms of change in the music education sector that encourages inclusive practice and also um, I guess um, it's about disabled and non-disabled people working uh, in a more equal way, working in a more collaborative way, um, bringing some of those values of inclusion um, into real lived experience. I think inclusion is about an emotional attachment. It's about feeling. Um, but it's also about real lived experience. Um, it's not just about the music session, as we'll explore a little bit later on. Um, I refer to so what is inclusion. Just 
because that resource pack was um, something that I developed in the youth sector um, about 14 years ago. So inclusion isn't a new concept. I'm sure many of you um, have been working around the field of inclusion for a long time. Um, but nevertheless, our values and beliefs around inclusion have evolved and developed. And I believe there is a clarity, there is a set of core values that really boldly push in our expectations of what inclusion means. So that idea about it being bold and radical is possibly suggesting that we're not quite going far enough yet in, in terms of um, our experience of inclusion. But it'd be really, really good tonight to hear your experiences and your thoughts about inclusion, sharing some good practice if you've got some ideas and, and stuff. But hopefully this little introduction sounds like something that you thought you were coming to join in on a webinar. Um, so can we go to the next slide, Martin? Um, and that's just say that's that's where the link is. And Douglas has put it into the chat there so you don't have to write it down. And actually, don't worry about writing any of the slides down because it's all in the document. Um, all these slides are pretty much based in the document. And we're recording and it will come out afterwards as well. So. There you go. It's all covered. So... Um, but there is a document and it's available from today. And the document really has been reflecting on our journey and our practice. And we've shared it with some of our partners at Youth Music and Amy, the Alliance for Musically Inclusive England. So we're building a shared collective understanding. And I kind of feel, I don't know about you musicians out there, but we're on a winner. Music is the key to how inclusion can work. Um, there's a really good TV programme on at the moment with Stuart Copeland talking about what music is and the impact that it has on us. And the first thing that he came up with was about how it makes connections and how we as humans through music can communicate far further than we do through language, how we can unite a music is the glue that binds us together in that emotional attachment. So we're kind of on a bit of a winner by being music practitioners. And I know that there are some people maybe listening. Actually, music is something that we believe is a right of everyone to do and make. Um, so do feel free to explore music as a way of understanding inclusion and experiencing it because for me music is the key um i'm going to go on to the next slide so um really this is a bit of a challenge to invite you all to share in the chat some of your thoughts around inclusion um maybe you might like to finish off the um yes the i've just seen that craig yeah it's um it's bbc4 adventures with music um i don't know if anybody can get the link there but i'll just put the link in. we've got the link, the link up there just went into the thank you chat panel it's the same place where i put in the inclusion document thing Brilliant. It's just a really lovely way. It's not about disability. And I think that's kind of one of our kind of ideas about inclusion is that inclusion touches our wide diversity and the whole of our experience and the whole of our experience in music making. But our journey at Drake has been to kind of articulate through the focus of disabled and non-disabled people working together and understanding how we work together and how we create music together um, as our focus. So, yeah, music is. So my challenge to everyone listening, now I'm going to be quiet for a moment and I'm going to give you all a couple of seconds to just jot down into 
part on that sentence. Inclusion is. Go for it. Inclusion is. Okay, so we've got Alexandra coming in with creative expression. Brilliant. Freddie, thank you. Yeah, Freddie. Yeah. Great, some lovely things coming in here. The biggest barriers receive the most support. And I think that really links nicely to the kind of idea about some else putting equality of opportunity and equal opportunities. It's flying in now, we're all getting the hand yeah, hang of this. Great, great contributions. Contributions to thrive and succeed. Yeah. Respecting contribution, that's nice. Yeah. Not an option. Thank you, Philip. Acceptance and accessibility. <clears throat> yeah. Brilliant. Just keep those flying in all yeah. night. Any We're... any nuggets of wisdom, please do share them on the chat. And um, once I've kind of presented this next bit, we're going to open up the microphones as well for anyone who wants to make a comment or question. You know, I haven't got it all right. None of us have got it all right. And I think I work with um, quite a few of the Drake Music associate musicians in developing the document. Um, and one of the persons who is in the room tonight, Gary, thank you for your contribution as well in developing the document. But one of the things that me and Gary were talking about was the, the notion of wanting to get everything right all the time, but actually learning from not being perfect, not always getting it right, but actually those things being really important in developing inclusive practice. That opportunity to always take it further and always want more to, 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 you know, I'm a musician. I want my music to always sound really nice. Um, but actually most of the time, you know, it can be quite scrappy and messy and that's where I do my learning. And I think inclusion is part of that journey. So I think one of the, the key things that we wanted to get across was that inclusion isn't a definition we didn't find it that helpful to kind of define it. I mean, you've all come up with some really, really good gems and there's not a right or a, you know, there's nothing wrong in what anybody has said there actually, because that is all our experience of inclusion. Um, and actually to define it limits its potential, I think. Um, the other thing we didn't want to do was defend it because we believe it to be the right starting point and therefore our question is to turn back and actually say why aren't you including why are we excluding people and to start from that point of view so that's kind of uh, how we felt um, we wanted to take inclusion so it wasn't definition but it was a process it was about trying to identify what the key principles were that make inclusion inclusion. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, please feel free to ask questions. Can we go to the next slide, please? If I was a scientist, I would have come up with this really clever chart and it would work with numbers and science and all that kind of, but I'm not. But actually it kind of does work. Um, so our document, we believe that there's kind of these four principles um, that kind of underpin inclusion. And then along the kind of um, horizontal there are these other ideas up around pace, space, choice and control. Um, and these are all kind of considerations. Um, I'd like to quickly just read something by... Uh, a really brilliant writer 
by the name of Michelin Mason. And she wrote a beautiful book quite a few years back. Yeah, I love a chart too, Emily. <laughs> um, can't beat a chart. That's why I did it. But, you know, it, it, if you scientifically unpacked it, I'm not quite sure. But you get the idea. It's about a journey along that arrow around being valued and contributing and understand and belonging. Anyway, back to Michelin Mason. And she wrote this book called Incurably Human. Um, and she wrote, I'm beginning to realise that inclusion is not a definable state, but a set of principles which can be applied to anything. It is not essentially about disability, but about building sustainable futures for all of us. And I hope that kind of reflects some of what people are kind of saying in the chat. I'm going to paste it as well. So you've got it down in the uh, chat box. There we go. Yeah. So can we go to the next slide? So this is essentially um, the document that we've launched today. Um, and interestingly enough, there's an article in today's Guardian about accessibility in theatre. Um, and they too put out things about engaging with disabled people, changing perceptions, and about being everyone's responsibility. And those are themes that kind of run through this document. So um, I'm going to unpack each of the principles and then we're going to hand over to a kind of bit of a wider discussion with you all. So um, can we go on to the next slide? So the first one looks at belonging. And I'm not necessarily going to cover each of the details. They're there in the document for people to read afterwards. But so these four principles underpinning inclusion is just that sense of it being a feeling of being right, of having a sense that you've been thought of, that, that the organisation that's invited you has thought about um, your needs um, as a human and as a learner and as a participant. And actually you can be yourself. And I think there's something that's really important that's a difference from the for us as disabled people not having to hide our needs and not having to make a valid judgment about our impairment, but to be kind of proud of who we are um, and be part of a belonging. And that leads us, yeah, the next slide's fine. That leads us to having a conversation, a dialogue, so that we really begin to understand each other. My background is in doing like stuff like disability equality training. And this is where the understanding bit for me comes in and around our learning about how we engage with each other. I think most of us will be fairly familiar with things like having a person-centered approach and what that means. Um, but I think understanding is also about understanding our diversity and our equality. Um, and it's about listening and learning from each other. Um, and one of the things that we've particularly picked up on is the critical thing and the difference is about listening to the quieter voices, the voices that are missing from the conversation, um, the voices that are missing from the table. Um, and those are really, really critical because without them, nothing changes. Um, and if inclusion is about one thing, it is about change. It's about bringing about real change. So having that conversation about understanding each other is really, really key. Um, and in terms of equality, that's about language. That's about understanding the role of access, uh, understanding culture and all those sorts of things. So that's just a little bit about understanding. Let's go to the next slide. Hopefully this is all making sense. Do feel free to keep chucking things in the chat box. Yeah, there's lots of great things coming in on the chat. Right. Um, I think contributing is something that, that um, I was, uh, I went to a mainstream college um, 
but I was told I could watch lots. <laughs> I was told I wouldn't be allowed to physically do stuff, but I could watch everyone else doing stuff. Um, and I think there's a really critical bit about the right and the power of being able to contribute and participate and doing things that celebrate and reflect how we do it, the, the, the way in which we do it, the authenticity um, is something that is really important to me in music. It's about being real. Um, but the two first statements about choice and control is about having more than really, it's kind of saying we want more than what is often on offer, which is maybe a choice between A and B. That isn't really um, a choice. We, you know, to really take control, we need to have a range of space is hiding from ourselves where we want to be. Um, and that's really in response to not having to fit in. It's not about disabled people fitting into uh, non-disabled people's words. We often say, when we go to meetings, it's about starting off a blank bit of paper. Um, because quite often the bits of paper haven't been written with the voice of disabled people in them. So therefore we need to start with a blank page. Um, and invite the voices of people that haven't had an opportunity to stay self. So contributing is a critical thing for me and us around inclusion. And the final principle, which is the lovely one that we all really need as human beings, is that sense of being valued. Um, that sense of um, achievement. Um, and we get that in music, you know, when you play in a band and you've had a little jam, wow, you know, that, that sense of we've just nailed a little tune is, is, is brilliant. But also there's that the stuff that we all know about music, growth, confidence, the esteem, um, and the differences and the change that brings. So all those things... Um, and the challenge is in the next slide. Nothing about us without us, and all means all. So when Drake started on its journey, we needed to unpack what we needed to do around representation, around disability equality, so that it was in everything we did. Um, so I think I'd like to hand over to Douglas there just to open up to, I don't know if there's anything you want to pick up on that I've missed out in the chat room, Douglas. Or... No, well, there's been some really great comments coming in, um, particularly, you know, pertinent to what we're just talking about now. Margaret is saying, first step is in, understand, in understanding to recognise that some voices are not always at the table. Yeah. Um, and this point about the voices that are uh, defining the parameters of the conversation before the conversation even starts. Um, so that's really key. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And actually, um, you know, the, the experience of inclusion. Um, being the only one in the room um, is, you know, certainly in the music education sector, is, is, is certainly as a practitioner is something that um, is an experience. Um, and and, and recognising that actually we do need a lot more voices. Um, and that's not just verbal, obviously. Yeah. We're, the, the, this is really linked in to the whole movement that Drake has had around and the art, that article in the Guardian today just reflects that that real need. We did that bit of research 
in the document uh, We All Make Music, which kind of really highlighted a uh, lack of representation. So, um, you know, what is your experiences out there of how you address that? How do you ensure that there are voices at the table and particularly those that aren't there currently? Be really interested to hear your thoughts and views on that. Um, yeah. Um, Martin, it'd be really, really lovely to jump to slide 21, please. And I might jump back, but we'll go to 21. Because here are a few kind of key, key questions. Yeah. So I think where a lot of our, I know in our, our Amy conversation, and trying to make inclusion a reality and they're kind of asking the question so what are the indicators how we know that we're being more inclusive and I just wonder if if there are any examples out there of where you feel you've experienced really good inclusive practice or what are musically so what do you see that tells you that's happening yeah so we've got Lily here saying, talking to the support team and trying to understand their needs. Yeah. Could, could you elaborate on that a little bit, Lily? I don't know if you've got a microphone that might want to or just add a little bit to that. We can, uh, we can bring you in on the... Um... Anyone actually can, is yeah. welcome now to raise a hand and... You, you can put your hand up. Contribute. Uh, in the control panel at the bottom of the screen. Alex gave an example there of everyone engaged in music making, in making music. So we've got Lily with her hand up. Yeah. So do you want to come in, Lily's mic, Marshall, have you brought Lily's mic on? Hello. Hi, Hello, Lily. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I've been waiting for this webinar for some time. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> hi to everybody, actually. Um, our, our work for Martin Music Foundation, and uh, we do a lot of shows, including all the special schools in the area. So, for example, last year we had a massive show in Royal Albert Hall, and we had um, two special schools, or actually three special schools, uh, coming with us. And I had to prepare one of the classes in one of the schools. So what really helped me to write the music so they can join our show was really the whole team that was supporting all the helpers, all the assistants, really helping me to understand what's going on in this room. Uh, how can I communicate better with all, all of them and how can we help them uh, deliver as well their ideas and uh, build up the music towards the show. So it was really nice experience, and I think all you're talking about really fits that. Thank you. Thanks, Lily. And I, th I think that I that you know really um, underpins the idea that it's everybody's responsibility. Uh, Absolutely and the yes. And the proactive nature of it, the responsibility yes. is on the disabled and non-disabled team that are working together. Yeah, to help understanding the whole, think, how, how um, we can create together. Yeah, and I think one of the challenges is, um, I, I work with a number of arts organisations, and um, as particularly in different contexts, but it, it, it's really important to do some pre-work with the support staff, of course, to get to know their context and to get to know them, but also to kind of... Um, bring about some of the ideas about what might be challenging. So the, the idea that actually sometimes we might want to encourage people to step back so that um, students experience themselves or have more control, have more choice 
I or also, have... yes, and also to prepare the stuff, like you said, to actually, Absolutely. they, for example, they found out it a little bit di difficult to actually use the instrument, and yeah. the whole class actually um, felt good that they're not the only one about the yeah. whole thing, and yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole preparation really helps. Yeah, yeah. Um, Margaret's just joining there with a really nice. And thank comment. you, Lily. That was great. I, yes, Margaret's have got quite a long. Yeah, I think I think what's really important. Now I've had a lot of conversations with associate musicians who work in uh, special schools about you know is that uh, an inclusive uh, way of working and of course. Inclusion works in all sorts, you know, it works in whatever context you're in. Um, and it's about sort of challenging and, and, and moving things forward in whatever context you're in. Um, and I know that sort of some of the challenges around the, the context of special educational needs um, in terms of equality and our diversity is quite challenging um, um, in, in the context and mainstream. Um, school is, is, is obviously another context in which inclusion um, has a, a set of challenges but I think what Margaret is pointing out there about data informing the program design is really really critical that kind of being able to demonstrate the the needs and, and, and the starting points for understanding the child. Well it takes you to a place where you can start to put into practice informed anticipatory accessibility and inclusion so yeah. you you're being again coming back to the proactive nature yeah. of inclusion yeah uh and t you know taking steps based on what what you know from your data makes that targeted of course and i think there's a really really important learning experience for non-disabled children to have an experience of inclusive music making and accessible music technology and knowing things are done in a different way and actually to actually give them real quality experiences of good disability arts to raise expectations of disability art and, and music made by disabled artists. Uh, one of the things that Drake Music in this journey um, is doing more and more is engaging with disabled artists and uh, Work that's out there because the disability arts movement is rich. It's a rich tapestry of 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 our experience, and disabled and non-disabled children need to experience that. Need to experience because otherwise it 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 doesn't paint the full picture of what inclusion is about. I think it's kind of a critical part of it. I think that's a really important point, John. And from the perspective of Drake Music our position is that inclusion is is an opportunity it's you know you talked about earlier not not having to defend it and philip flood talked about it not being an option but actually yes but also it's a it's a fantastic creative artistic leadership organizational um team opportunity on all those levels and that you know from within drake music that's talking from experience i'm not saying in any way that we're at the end of that journey but it's a, it, absolutely, it's an opportunity. I'd just like to drop back Martin, if we may. Martin's got a hard job jumping around with me, but I think it's kind of moving along with the conversation as we go. I'd really like to uh, jump back to uh, slide 17, just for a second, Martin. Because um, what our, our journey has been is, is that, i um, gone a bit too far there, Martin. Yeah, 17. Next one. Lovely. So um, I think there are a number of challenges around inclusion that make it bold and radical. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we, as a disabled person, I believe in inclusion and equality um, and our full richness, our full diversity. Um, and, and, and one of the things that we have done over the last four or five years in Drake, is to kind of look at our practice through 
we've looked through the prism or the lens, if you like, of uh, different focuses. So, for example, we've looked at what does the social model of disability mean to our approach? Moving away from a medical model, um, which it could be argued, um, you know, uh, ha, you know, challenges the special educational needs model, if you like, um, into a kind of a rights-based approach about access and participation. So asking some challenging questions, but not seeing them as a threat, but seeing them as an opportunity to take inclusion further. So one of the lenses that we look through is around the social model of disability, which basically redefines disability, not as a medical uh, issue, but as a, an issue that says society creates barriers and inaccessibility in its systems and approaches, and that we need to remove those barriers that are imposed. Um, it's about addressing issues of discrimination, oppression, and collective and self-identity. Uh, and which is to really think about access and how we make it everybody's responsibility. Can we go to the next slide there, Martin? Sorry. Yeah. Um, that actually, uh, we talk about the aesthetic access in what does access bring to our learning and our experience of inclusion? Um, and we find it adds, it adds a whole dynamic which makes things much more creative, much more exciting and creates new opportunities for learning and new opportunities for expression. But ultimately, what we really want to do around inclusion is this final slide, which is to look through the prism of bringing about change. And I think this is in something that Margaret was saying with her comment about data. Um, and it's about having real evidence of change, change and progression. Um, I don't think inclusion is just another new word. Inclusion is about doing things differently. And if we don't do things differently, then we're probably not doing inclusion. <laughs> um, if things stay the same, um, you know, if we don't do things differently, then things can tend to stay the same. So I think a really important bit about inclusion is about saying, what can we do differently? What can we do about pace, time and space? So that um, have that space and the pace to contribute and change things. Yeah. A very useful question that we ask ourselves yeah. and that you've asked many times, John, is you know, how do we exclude? So we, do we start yeah. from there? Um, and then, and then you, your control that you can change. Yeah. And that's about, as I've said earlier, it's about being proactive, but also then it's about moving forward on that inclusion journey. Yeah. And Beth there's got it, you know, that shift to it being about a rights-based approach, a uh, critical shift to a right, rights -based is fundamental because it, it then is in music not as some sort of therapeutic thing um, solely but also as a as a as a as an art as a form of expression as a skill to be learned um, just the right to be able to express yourself without it being rooted into any one of your <laughs> particular characteristics of diversity, but to celebrate you as a whole. Um, and that rights-based approach is rooted in disabled people's understanding of the social model um, and where we've moved away perhaps from kind of notions of special education needs and 
that kind of stuff. Can I ask you a question about that, John? If about it's the, hard, no. It'll be an easy <laughs> one, um, I think. Um, about the importance of the the disability equality idea that that uh, that we're still on a struggle for equality, um, and that, that how how important it is to maintain an understanding of that. So just say that again. The the importance of equality in the in the equation. Yeah, I think because the whole thing about pace is that things in our world move very fast and that's not necessarily for the better um, because pace can exclude and I think we really need to think that one through because I kind of feel that some uh, Mitchell Mason I'm sorry to go back to Mitchell's book but she does this brilliant little story about how um, you know, the whole thing about getting out the front door in the morning and one member of a family rushes and runs in and out the door about five times before they finally get to work and they keep coming back because they've got their bag and they've got the key and they've got whatever. And actually, because that just takes me or Mitch longer, we just kind of take things a bit slower and think things through and we get out the door roughly at the same time. So pace doesn't necessarily mean doing slower. It sometimes means just doing things in a better, rigorous way. That means we can all achieve what we want to, which is getting to work on time. Um, and part of that's negotiating the time that, 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 that is reasonable and works for us. So I think bringing about changes is really, really critical to those kind of things. Um, can I just um, yeah. bring up a point that Philip Fudd has made yeah. uh, about lived experience Please do. and the importance of lived experience? I think it's, it's crucial. Um, yeah, Philip says, people have probably seen it on the chat, that anything we're part of doesn't happen unless someone with lived experience is central to the planning and delivery. Yeah. Uh, so that's not just in terms of the delivery, but also how it's conceived. And, uh, so right from the very start, that takes time and budget, but it's crucial and rewarding. That's a very good comment, thanks for it. And I think another bit of that rights basement is about being grassroots, getting really close. One of the things I kind of wanted to comment about, about involving staff is actually, it is really important to involve and engage support staff, but don't forget directly engaging and talking to the child because they will have a different perspective um, and the amount of times we've worked in groups where we've read something and it has not matched when we've then gone to work with, a, with anybody and the, 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 their experience and their richness, um, you know, is really, really important. So something about what Phil, Philip said for me, which is important, which is about being grassroots, engaging directly like you say, with people with experience. I wonder if we could, we could, does anybody else want to come in with a hand up at this yeah. point? Because John and I are doing a lot of talking. We're having some fantastic chat in the chat box, um, which we're really appreciating. I'd be particularly interested to hear anything we haven't said yet. There must be stuff missing that we haven't mentioned. So there's a hand up. Here we've got a hand up from, um, is that Joe? Oh, yeah. I think I might cut out because I'm on a train. Oh, <laughs> I was yeah. just wondering okay. whether... Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm just really interested in uh, the way you're thinking about the model of inclusion and um, whether it actually just extends out to um, a sort of uh, a more social model to not just disabled people or marginal groups but just actually really um large groups of people just everyone and whether you think of it in that way yes absolutely i mean um in, so there is like critical uh, social change absolutely absolutely uh, uh, you know inclusion um is about it working for everybody um and I genuinely, genuinely believe that, uh, you know, um, 
in terms of our wider diversity, that, 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 that bit about understanding each other is about understanding all our characteristics and differences we bring um, as, 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 as male and female, as different genders, different cultures, different sexuality, and, 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 and recognising that actually we go over all of those. You know, disabled people experience all of those uh, other characteristics. Um, and we don't fit in a box, you know. Um, so I, th I think you're absolutely right, John. Have you got have you got um, experiences um, that 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 you can think of where some of the social model stuff would would work uh, in in the context of your thinking? Um, yeah, well, yeah, because I I I'm a musician and I work. Uh, with lots of different people um, but I I work I I, I do sound walks <laughs> and I find that um, I I want to, I want them to be um, disabled led um, or actually um, just led by people of um, people that have had lived in, lived uh, experience of um, inclusive practice and um, I'm getting more of an idea that actually most people do have lived in lived experience of inclusive practice because it's getting it's around them all the time <laughs> um, and separating people off seems to be quite a um, it doesn't it just for me, it's not. It's it doesn't seem progressive. If that yeah. makes sense, I yeah. see this as as, as a really inclus inclusion, as a as a as a, an incredible model. I I think it's growing like further. It's like yeah. a it's a it's like a model which has no politics, yeah. but it's beyond politics. It's like a meta model. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I think I think something what you're saying there for me touches is is about that 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 there is an intrinsic there's an intrinsic kind of feeling and that's what we want to get to we want to get to this feels right and natural and the way to go the, the way of the Jedi um, but the, yeah the the, the the important thing I think at the moment or the one maybe the thing that we're suggesting is that there isn't enough action there isn't enough um, you know, you do have to address some issues about who's not at the table yeah. and how we address inequality so that, you know, everyone's voice is heard. Um, and so I guess uh, a critical, yeah. you know, I, I think what you're saying is absolutely uh, spot on. So uh, thank you for that contribution. Okay. Got, we've we've got a little you. bit more time. Um, last to run into the last five minutes, but if anybody else would like to... There's another hand up. Come and jump in, Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Your Hello. microphone. Yep, great. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just uh, interested by the comment about there's not enough action. And I, I guess I have a sense that there's quite a lot of people doing lots of great work. And I wonder if there's something about bringing some of that, like surfacing some of that across a range of contexts. And I wonder kind of what we could do to profile or like good practice if they say in yeah. a range of places because I think there there yeah. might be visible kind of national action but I think there's quite a lot of great people doing really brilliant things at a range of scales. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's where these documents come from that that great lived experience that that stuff that has been about good practice. And I think this document is about advocating that that kind of need to share good practice and encourage, you know, it's, it's kind of, um, yeah, kind of sharing experiences because everyone's context is really different as well. And everyone's got different challenges that they're dealing with. Um, and, and that, you know, certainly Drake music is interested in sharing good practice and hearing people's experience as part of what, what I wanted tonight was to to start to platform, if you like, that good practice 
that, that you that you've articulated there. And I also think it's worth putting a word in for the Amy uh, project that Youth Music are leading. I'll, I'll just put a link up to their online resources. Um, again, you know, they're really wanting to um, highlight and profile the work that's going on around the country. Um, I think you know, it's really important, Margaret, to recognise where good work is happening yeah. and to give that a platform and to shine a light on it yeah. and to make sure that we, um, uh, you know, we, we recognise where good things are happening. I, it's just really important that we don't say, oh, well, nothing's happening. But at the same time as what John was saying, I do think we, at the same time, we still need to say to ourselves, what can we change? And, Absolutely. you know, an, an organisation like Drake Music, we, that includes us. Yeah. Sorry, Margaret. I no, it's just, I suppose, like thinking about your own model, the social model, that it's sometimes about how do you find those pockets, isn't it? It's about like creating yeah. enough of an environment for, and oftentimes we know, right, the best practitioners and the people doing the best yeah. work are not the people who often appear in these case studies. And actually, how do you kind of uncover that? The people yeah. who are in this status quo and just part of their day-to-day -day life with a deeply inclusive practice and... Yeah. Um, than being, I guess. Yeah, it is about, um, yeah, and I think things like the Alliance for Music Inclusive England, um, uh, Drake Music, and I'm sure there are other organisations around there, um, but that are starts, you know, that are providing places to share good practice and to promote good practice. And that's what this document is kind of about. It's about starting to, to really sort of, create that shared understanding so that people don't have to dig around quite so hard to find it yeah yeah there you know i go around the country and i see some great stuff all over the place um and 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 and, and there is some collaborative work that goes out there people are partnering up and sharing resources and, and doing some great stuff um so thank you for that i just noticed that lily asked a question about training and um so that sort of takes me on nicely to kind of, you know, there, there is training that is available and there's some stuff on the Drake website about that around musically inclusive practice. Um, and we're, we are sort of developing sort of tools and, 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 and bits and pieces to help people to identify where they are on the journey and where they want to go next. And, make your own journey planner and, and that kind of thing. And those are things that are going to evolve um, as we take the document out further. We do a lot of work, Lily, um, through training, workforce development, but also delivery, uh, co-delivery with hub practitioners, um, music educators, music leaders, um, and more resources and more information about that will be coming along soon, but we've, I've posted up a link. Um, I just, I'm sorry to jump in, John, but I just want to make sure that I mention uh, the survey. Um, it's really important that we yeah. kind of understand how people receive this uh, webinar and, and how it resonates with you and, yeah. and what, it, what it's meant for you in terms of your own learning and progress. So uh, there's a link that I've posted up a couple of times. I'll put it in again. Slide 23, Martin. Um, which is a... a feedback survey so please 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 do click through that and do that for uh, for us we really value that um we're sort of coming to the end uh, i don't know if you've got any uh kind of final things you want to say john i, I, I want to say thank you to everyone for attending and thank you to you john and martin and everybody who's contributed yeah i am um, i'm just, you know i'm really excited um about our future i think it's really exciting uh, we've got some challenges um but um we've got a lot of experiences to have and yeah. lots of music making to do and uh, i think as the document suggests for for us anyway making music is the key to to inclusion um and and i you know I, i'm really really uh happy to have shared tonight with everyone um you know there's loads we didn't cover um and a couple of challenges as well so just a, a big thank you to everyone that's contributed and been part of it um 
yeah, I, I've, I'll, I'll say goodbye. Thank I've, got, you. I've got one last thing to say, which is that John and I are, if you're coming to the Inclusive Practice in Action conference at Sound Connections are running in February, I think it's 13th of February, um, we're, we're running a workshop that will be the next sort of step on the journey, if you like, where some of the things that we'll be talking about, about how we look at our own practice and how we put things into action, we'll be exploring some of that. Um, and then also there's two future webinars um, as part of the Step Up programme, 25th of February, um, Career Development for Music Leaders, and 1st of April, um, Getting the Best Out of iPads for Music. Uh, I am just going to post the link so that, um, but yes, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. It's been, we hope it's been as good for you as it has for us. I know that the uh, the webinar ends quite abruptly at the end, so just once again, thank you all so much for being part of this, contributing. Um, yeah, brilliant. The uh, conference someone just asked is, is Sound Connections Inclusive Practice in Action, um, 13th of February, I think. Should have that off the tip of my tongue, but I've just posted the name up. Sound connections. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Someone's got it.